Mr. Lee's objection to a front of the court recommendation. He is present in the courtroom. Ms. Doyle Gilberto is present via Zoom. Would you both please raise your right hands? Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give in this case is the truth, the whole truth, the truth, the whole guy? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. You may put your hands down. Ms. Schultz, can you give me an update regarding this? This just sounds like it's out of state order that was transferred from Indiana to Michigan. Not, not transferred, registered under the Uniform Interstate Family Support Act. Okay. Um, so, uh, order out of Winnebago County, Illinois has been registered with the Huron County Friends of Court Office for enforcement only. Um, Mr. Lee did timely object to the notice of registration, which occurred on January 3rd of 2024. Um, and I'll, uh, I know he had indicated in his written objection and said that his health concerns as the reason for the objection. Unfortunately, when we look at U.S. law registrations, the only true objection criteria is a mistake of fact as to the amount of the debt or a mistake of identity as to the payer. So I'm not aware that we have either of those. And if there's an issue regarding a support amount or, or charging. Okay. In Bingo yeah. County, Illinois, or we Illinois have Illinois. no authority to modify the obligation amount. We are simply enforcing Illinois. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry, I said Indiana. Uh, Mr. Lee, what is your, is your objection purely based upon your claimed health issues? They already, they're already trying to take my disability that I haven't even got. She can have whatever she needs. I don't care. Okay, so what are you objecting to then, sir? I, I'm not. You're not objecting to the support? I don't, I haven't worked in two years <clears throat> because of my health and I don't have no money at this time. And like I say, they've already reached out to the disability and they already say that they're going to take over half of it. And if that's what she wants, then there's nothing I can do about that. Yes, sir, may, may I clarify? Go ahead. Or ask the court to clarify. Is there a valid income withholding out of the state of Illinois that would prevent Michigan from enforcing the order? Because we have not received that information, and so, but we can certainly follow up on it. I don't understand. Because we can only have one child support order, only one state should be enforcing that order. So yeah. if Illinois has taken the step to issue a garnishment order, registration shouldn't be enforced in Michigan because then we could have a situation where both states I agree. are now garnishing that benefit. So is Illinois garnishing it right now? That's what it says. It says that Winnebago County. I don't have a list of that. I don't know what it says. <coughs> this says that Winnebago County has, has reached out and, and is wanting to take my disability before the decision is being made. But yes, that's what's going on. What, when is that information dated? A couple days ago. Uh, there are two of them, Your Honor. Uh, one of them was received on the 30th of January, and one was received on the 19th or 20th. This one is dated. Could, could you provide those to Ms. Schultz? Yeah. And since you've been speaking, ma'am, I need to have your name on this record. Lisa Lee. Don't be sorry. Your name? Lisa Lee, Your Honor. Your Honor, it, it does appear that there was uh, income withholding issued on January 5th, 2024 by the Winnebago County um, Office of Child Support, but they issued a subsequent termination notice on January 17th, most likely due to the registration here in Michigan. Got it. Um, and they had provided us with a notice through um, the interstate communication system that they had done that. It looks like we crossed messages to say we registered, there's a projection hearing scheduled for February 2nd. They issued and then terminated based on our notice that there was an objection there. So they're turning it over here on top. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Ms. Doyle Gilberto, do you have anything to add? I am unaware of completely anything that's going on. I have not been notified by Winnebago County to what they're doing. This is, I didn't know anything until last night when I opened my mail and saw that I was due in court this morning. Okay. So well, I am completely oblivious to everything that's going on. What the court understands is there's a support order out of Winnebago County initially. Uh, yes, I believe it's correct. there's a significant arrearage. Uh, a party, in this case, Mr. Lee moved to the state of Michigan. While that was going on, Illinois initially in January uh, was going after any way of garnishment, whatever, to get uh, to get the back due support. 
they realized that, well, they sent it to Huron County that they would enforce it, so they withdrew that. So what it comes down to is just an objection that appears to Huron County enforcing this, and I don't find any uh, proper objection. Huron County is now going to enforce this in uh, the, the Illinois order, and the objection to the FOC recommendation is respectfully denied. So support is still going to be uh, sought, in, but in this case, now it's Illinois' task here on county to enforce. It. <coughs> That's what we're going to do. Okay, so if there was to be any modifications, it will be has to be done at my end through Winnebago County. Yes, that's that, that's my understanding because we're only okay. enforcing. The and I and I can't, Your Honor, I can't speak to requirements regarding abatement due to incapacitation in Illinois. Michigan law obviously allows for that, but I would strongly encourage Mr. Lee to contact Winnebago County to look at that issue. And that's how we'll leave it. What, what's going on? That is, if you have issues relative, what Ms. Schultz is saying, if you have issues relative to disability claims, your, your overall health, all of that, you need to address that in Winnebago. You want to bring it to their attention. That's up to you. I can't tell you what to do. But you're all free to go. Uh, I received a complaint on December 21st, 2023 uh, from Ms. Howard regarding a complaint of violation of the negative communication provision by Mr. Durkin. Um, Half post messages as well as screenshots were attached to the show cause motion. Um, after reviewing those messages, as well as the order uh, from most recent order from June 27, 2022, uh, the show cause was scheduled against Mr. Durbin for violating the negative or degrading comments uh, provision of the communication order. Uh, but further looking at the app post messages, Your Honor, um, and looking at that order a little bit more in detail, there is a provision in that same order that states the parties utilize app post. Uh, for purposes of non-emergency communication, which they were. <coughs> but it also say, states that said communication shall be limited to parenting time exchanges only until further order of the court. And after reviewing those messages, part of the show cause was against them, both parties as well, for that portion of the provisions as the conversations were not uh, regarding uh, exchanges only. Well, that is the status you're on currently with this show cause. Okay. Thank you. Well, I, I read. I read the app post conversations. It's important. Stuck in meth residue all day because of you. Falls. I'm sorry, Your Honor, I forgot to mention too. This show cause was the violation of the <coughs> case provision. Is a second and subsequent show. I didn't see that too. For both or just one? Both. Both. <coughs> Horrible people end up getting what they deserve. You're a horrible person. I hope you suffer as much as your dad did. Enjoy your Jerry Springer Christmas party BS without the child this year. Folks, when is this going to stop? Hopefully. Pardon soon. me? Hopefully soon. How about now? I'm trying, sir. How about you, sir? What I said was on word, and I apologize to you and Ms. Howard, but... It's, it's not apologies to the court. The court understands the frustration going on amongst or between parents. But this is the child we're talking about. Are we not? Yeah, and she doesn't deserve that. No, she doesn't, from both of you. I'm sorry, what does she not deserve? The communication between the two of you that has nothing to do with parenting time exchanges and it's just a chance of one person to point at the other person and it continue to cause problems. And guess who sees that? The child. Now, the child may not see the messages, but the child gets, I mean, we've got to give children a little extra credit. <coughs> when they see and hear things going on, it affects them. There's no justification or excuse by either of you for this. I find you both in contempt. Or anything you'd like to say, Ms. first before the court imposes disposition. Uh, I've been trying to go parent, and every time I do, it just turns into a toxic debate. So I don't know what else to do besides file my complaint. I'm here. Right. Sir, how about you? Miss Miss Howard decided to keep asking for me. Uh, hey, don't use the child's name, please. I'm sorry, my daughter. 
from me on my weekend and my holiday, I texted Mr. Holwood. He told me the only thing I can do is report and we can figure out makeup time. But there's no way to make up Christmas morning. If I decided not to give Addison back when that was my when it was Miss Howard's parenting time, I'm sorry, my daughter, I would have cops at my house. I I think my um, consequences would be much worse than what's gonna instead of just makeup time. Um well, this is not a makeup time motion. This is a objection, or I should say, a show cause regarding the behavior of the party. And I object, Your Honor, because we did have her Christmas morning. All well, we're, not, we're not going into that. I mean, we are going into the communication. <coughs> this is a second or subsequent offense. Your Honor, Ms. Howard sets the president for conduct when she ignore, totally ignores the law and just decides she can come in here and pick a day whenever she feels like to make up Christmas. I cannot make up Christmas. Well, again, this is not a motion regarding the night parenting time. This is a I'm show cause sure. relative to the behavior of both of you in this case. I find bad faith on both parties. This is the second subsequent action. Court will order in this case, both parties pay a fine of $250. It will be due no later than February 16, 2024. In the alternative, court will order that if, well, let, let, me, let me back this up. What order is fine. However, I'm putting both of you on notice. One of the requirements that the court, one of the one of the sanctions the court can issue, and this is in your notice to parents, is commit the parent to the county jail. Who wants to go to the county jail now? Yeah. Sir? Oh, sir. Yeah. Then stop, both of you. You come back before this court on the same light of the same type of issue, bring your toothbrush. We're not playing games anymore. This does not have a child situation. Follow the court orders. If ad closes for parenting time exchanges only, that's it. Um, Leave your comments to yourself. Your Honor, in the second, it says order. Um, Shall appear before court here on the county to show cause why he <coughs> not, was not held in contempt. And it's right, if this motion for violation of parent time, I I thought in here it was a motion or something towards parent time as well. No, this is alleged violation of communication provision, second or subsequent. That's what's being done. Okay, that's it. Okay, Your Honor, you're making a strong recommendation sure. on the file because this is an issue that may not come before the court very frequently, but what it does is. Um, fairly worse than the time before. Um, I make a recommendation for an eight hour high conflict appropriate class and online. Is this what we ordered in a previous case? Correct. There's uh, eight hours and 12 hours. I recommend um, the eight hour course. There is also a four hour course. But given they've been here before on these issues, I'd, I'd recommend the eight hour as of now. I'll order. And that's online? It's online, correct. Yes, um, and if the parties want to just verify their email addresses with front of court office before they leave, um, I can email them the link of where they can take down my course. Um, and the court has um, ordering a set time frame as to when the certificates be presented to. Uh, that, that would be good. We'll make it by March 29th. Yes, we do by March 29th. Well, I don't want to see you again in this court. And I don't mean to raise my voice, but by golly, this is your child we're talking about. I you need to start right now with a clean slate. That whiteboard is clean. Let's keep it that way. It's dry. Thank you. <laughs> he is in the courtroom. He's in the pro se. This man, Rogan, must represents the plaintiff in this matter who appears by the Zoom app. <laughs> Both parties, please raise your right hands. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give in this case is the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? So help you get. Yes, sir. Is that stuff? I'm sorry, we couldn't hear you. Your microphone may be muted. Yes. There we go. Okay, thank you. This is Mr. Ossentowski's motion. Mr. Ossentowski, please stand and address the court relative to your motion. Judge, if I may interject, I spoke to Mr. Ossentowski in the hall, and we have a couple of housekeeping matters that I think will actually resolve one of our motions. Okay. Is that correct, sir? I'm yes, not, yes, sir. Okay, I just want to be sure. Um, as the court's aware, there's three motions. Um, Mr. Aspen has filed a motion regarding at close is one of his motions. And if the court remembers at the PROCON hearing last July, the parties agreed and the court consented if Mr. Ostentowski had his probation and or bond conditions updated, there would be no issue doing that. 
Mr. Ostentowski has provided proof that his bond conditions and his probation conditions have been updated. We have no objection to the parties communicating directly by app close. The only concern we would have is part of Mr. Ostentowski's motion, although I know he's in pro se, is that nobody else be involved. We would object to the friend of the court not being able to intercede in those conversations. I don't think Mr. Ostentowski is being malicious. I just think his lack of knowing the correct procedural terms. But we have no objection to the two of them communicating only pertaining to the minor child on app close with the ability of the front of the court to intervene if necessary. Does that sound okay to you, Mr. Rossi? Uh, yes, Your Honor, but I, I did include in my motion that I asked the court to give third parties access to have close to monitor conversations. That's the front of the court. Right. That's the front of the court. They're the only ones that monitor. And they're not actively monitoring. They have the ability to pull it up if they wait. We do not. Oh, you don't have that. I didn't know we, that. We, close can grant that ability. The parties can send us a link. We can do that. We do not actively monitor at close so. conversations. The parties must export the conversations and send them to us. I guess what I meant to say is I didn't mean for to like nobody to be allowed to, you know, that was what my intention. My oh, intentions no. were me being able to send a message, actually being able to send a message. So. And that motion will be granted, but when it comes to the third party aspect of it, um, if there's an issue, either party relative to use of app close, you can download that information and then provide it to the front of the court okay. because they don't get it, and nor do they act as a monitor. Okay. Okay. Yes. So that issue is addressed. What about the missing property? Well, two things, Alleged. just so I can make sure that I'm on track with you. Would you like me to draft the order, even though they are Mr. Asatas? I would appreciate okay. it. Okay. Um, and is it sufficient that the order say that post can be used between the parties and include a section so long as it doesn't violate any probation conditions? Or do you just want to say the parties can communicate by app post? I don't want Mr. Asatas if something happens to have to go back. So. I don't think we need to add that. Because okay. The perfect. probationary terms were modified. And yep. That's attached. Okay. So. Perfect, Judge. Then I will just say app post can be used between the parties. Great. Okay. And then the other issue, Judge, the only other issue, um, well, there's two. If there are any witnesses present for this hearing, I would ask they be sequestered to the hallway because we have a lot of family members in here and I don't know if they're all going to testify. Um, and the second thing is it would be asking for an offer of proof, despite the fact that Mr. Asentowski's form that he got from the clerk says parenting time, he's essentially asking to change custody under Bob under Barker. He has to meet the standard before we even move forward. Mr. Asentowski, are there any potential witnesses in the courtroom that you may be calling to testify? Um, your mother? Yeah. Okay. Is, well, there she is in front row, looking at back. Ms. Asatoski, I'm going to have to have you sit out in the hallway for a moment until you're called to testify in this case. I also advise you not to monitor this by YouTube. I, I, I'm, like, I, I'm not doubting you. I just want to place it on the record. Judge, to be fair, I already have one witness present in the courtroom. I've already advised Ms. Stewart that if his witnesses went, she would have to go, so she'll be sitting in the courtroom as well. Okay. All right. No, any other housekeeping matters? No, Judge. Why don't you get it first with the missing, alleged missing property? Cross and cross? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Um, so in the judge of the divorce, Ashley and I both had 180 days from the day that the judgment was entered to, in my case, I had to give her uh, a cashier check for $35,000, and she was to give me back my some of my personal belongings that she took out of the house. And I since I gave her a check for thirty five thousand dollars, <throat> then I guess received any information as to where the whereabouts of any of my stuff is or what it will be returned for if it will be returned. And according to your motion, old shake be getting cooler. Any deep freeze, newspapers, toy, sorry, toy lamps, Christmas ornaments, outside decorations, money missing. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Response. Your, your Honor, I'm prepared to respond. My client is also prepared to testify. If the court recalls, this is an incredibly lengthy and detailed judgment. Both parties are represented by counsel. My client is prepared to testify. She can take any of these things from the home. And in fact, she testified under both under questioning with me and opposing counsel, if you remember the case Burns, that she didn't have money. She didn't take money. She didn't leave with money. That issue was already resolved in the judgment of the divorce that if the parties found, either of them found money in the process of moving in, moving out, moving around, they would inventory and then split that money. It never happened because she didn't have any money. Mr. Asentowski had no proof to offer that there was money. My client claims there wasn't money. There's There was no documentation provided at the trial. And the parties agreed to the resolution. It's the same with everything else. My client left the home when she was required. She didn't take these items with her. I won't bore the court with the minutia of the details. They each got a Yeti I, 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 to some extent, can't believe that we haven't been able to litigate these things because they were already resolved in the judgment of divorce. 
My client left everything that she was required to. Some of the things, as we testified at the hearing for the entry of the PROCON, were she doesn't know where these things are. Everybody knows that when people move, things just disappear. They just do. And unfortunately, my client doesn't have access to recreate something like a newspaper from Detroit or another Yeti cooler. She took one, he took one. They, Realistically, just my client doesn't have this. Ms. Stern's going to testify that she provided Mr. Asimhazi his Christmas decorations, and the outside decorations were left on the house. It was a point of contention, and the court will notice in the, in the judgment of divorce, it was handwritten in because Mr. Asimhazi didn't want to be accused of keeping the decorations. So it was handwritten in on the day of the PROCON. The outside decorations were awarded to him, and they weren't even removed from the house, Judge. <clears throat> None of this stuff has been in my client's possession, taken, hidden, and she's prepared to testify to that. Wish to provide testimony regarding this? Yes, sir. Okay, what do you wish to um, ask? Ask Ms. Husky. All right, Ms. Ask Husky, you've been sworn. And uh, you can turn around, sir, you'll be able to see her. And you can start asking questions. Ask, were you, you were required to leave the house on June 1st, correct? Objection. It's not relevant to whether she took personal property with her. I think it's a proper foundation okay. just to get it started. Objections on the rule. Um, I believe so. And the judgment of divorce wasn't entered until July 20th? Correct. 20th. But when you left the house by June 1st, you had not taken any belongings out of the house. Objection. Whether she took some belongings is not relevant. That's an overly broad question. You want to focus a little bit more on the question, sir? Narrow it down a bit. So on June 1st, you did not take a washer, a dryer. Objection, Judge. Those aren't even a subject to what, what he's complaining about in, this, in the motion. Mr. Rostikowski, I think you're referring to the gold chain, Yeti, cooler, standing, deep, crease, newspapers from 1915, <clears throat> advanced ornaments, and outside decorations. Missing money in a $2 bill. That, that's what the motion states. Yes, Your Honor. So focus on that, because that's what you brought before the court. <clears throat> So you have no knowledge as to you did not take those items out of the house? No. Okay. <laughs> Chandler? That was who, 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 Mr. Chandler. I don't need to hear any comments, sir. Please. You're not a party to the action. I'm being respectful. Please keep the comments to yourself. Thank you. <clears throat> Next question, Mr. Rostopowski. There was a lock box safe underneath the bed when you left with a bunch of $2 bills and random money from like late grandmother. You didn't take any of those out of the house? No. There was in the basement five to six banks of money with change hundred dollar bills, random, random money. That when I returned home, there were some of them were smashed on the floor. Objection. If Mr. Ostentowski wants to testify, he can, but he still has to ask a question if he wants an answer. Mr. Ostentowski, just ask a question. You did not smash those banks or take any of the money. I did not smash the banks. I used the money that was in there for everyday expenses for our child. Which we had talked about at the judgment of divorce. You wish to offer them? Yes. Okay, you want to show those to throw them? Judge, the, the objection that I would launch is I have no idea when these photos are taken, frankly, what the photos are, and have no way to verify other than this is Mr. Ostentowski's statement that they are what they say he is. When you testify, you want to offer those things as evidence? Yes, yeah, sir. Okay. But you asked whether she smashed them, and I believe her answer was no, correct? Yes. Okay. Go ahead with your questions. And by the way, Ms. Jano, I apologize. Go ahead. Um, there was a, a safe in the basement that had a chainsaw file initially stuck into the where the handle was. Did you not use the chainsaw file to get into the safe to get belongings out of it? I'm going to object, Judge. He, in his motion, he very clearly says there was my safe was broken into. He's already talked about one safe. Okay. In his motion, there's no mention of multiple safes. There is only one safe. Okay. 
One safe. My safe, yes, that I've had since college. Did you not enter that safe with without a chainsaw file? You're referring to two different safes. You're talking about the safe that was under the bed before, and now you're talking about a safe that was in the basement. Yes, I'm sorry. Yep. Yes. Judge, I would ask for clarification which, which safe we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, what was the lockbox under the bed? The lockbox is under the bed safe in the basement. Okay, you're focusing on the safe. Yes. Okay. The safe in the basement. That had a chainsaw file stuck into it. Did somebody? Yes. <clears throat> yes, what? Yes, it was opened. Without my permission. It was in our home. We were married. My stuff was in there as well. When you say your stuff, can you clarify what you took out of there? I'm going to object. His motion is about things he's saying he's missing. If he wants testimony about her things, she hasn't filed a motion for an enforcement judge. Her things that she may have taken out of the safe are irrelevant. It was marital property until the judgment was entered. And again, Mr. Asantowski agreed to the entry of the judgment of divorce. And this magical found money that Mr. Asantowski claims was there was already dissolved during the divorce when the parties agreed to inventory any money they found and split it accordingly. Right, that's what's contained in the judgment. But I'm allowing the question over to Jack. Thank you, Judge. Well, you can re-ask your question, sir. So did you not, or, I'm sorry. What were the items that you took out of the safe? Um, offhand, I know like my um, title to my car was in there. There was, I'm sorry, I'm having a hard time remembering what all was in there from this long ago. Um, I believe my birth certificate was in there. My social security card was in there. The loan paperwork for my vehicle and our joint loan was in there. <laughs> Okay. So when you testified that you took no money out of the house. The objection asked and answered. <laughs> you can rephrase your question. <clears throat> when you got into the banks and took money out of them, you said you used that money, correct? Correct. And any and all money was supposed to be used to inventoried and split between us. Is that correct? This was money. <laughs> This was money that was used before the judgment of divorce. It was already spent on everyday expenses. At the time, we had a joint checking account. Objection. If he wants to testify, he will have a chance. He can't testify for my client. You just need to ask a question. No further questions, Robert. Broken question. Judge, I just want to clarify. We're only dealing with the personal property Correct. portion. Okay. Um, yes, Judge, I have questions for my client. Okay, if you can't, just make a signal. Smoke signal, hand signal. Okay, um, Ashlyn, let's talk about the personal property. The personal property that Mr. Asantowski says is no longer there and you haven't provided him. I want the court to be very clear. Did you take any of that property? No. Have you done anything to hide it, to secret it, to destroy it, to make it disappear so Mr. Asantowski couldn't get to it? No. Okay. Isn't it a true statement that Mr. Asantowski's mother reached out either to you or your mother to retrieve his sleep number bed right after the judgment of divorce was entered? Correct. And isn't it a true statement that you, in fact, made sure that bed was delivered to him on request on a mutually agreeable date? Is that correct? Correct. And that was delivered to his mom, just so the record's clear. True? Yes. Okay. Objection, Your Honor. Why are we talking about a sleep number bed? It's not listed in the motion. Judge, it's going to lay the foundation for the request that she be held in contempt for not delivering the funds. I didn't even bring it. The guns, I, I don't think, are part of this motion. Yes, they are, Judge. The first allegation on the handwritten page. Oh, right because it's there. very high here. I didn't <laughs> see that. Let's see. There it is. Ashley refused to make arrangements for my guns to change possession of my Linda and Uncle Dennis. It's stated in the judgment of divorce. I apologize. I did not see that because it's there's no margin on this paper. So. Thank you. Ms. Asantowski, has anyone contacted you to retrieve the weapons? No. Have you done anything to prevent the weapons from being retrieved? No. As a matter of fact, have we not spoken with your mother, Tina, who's going to testify that she is available to do the weapon exchange with Brandon's aunt? Yes. Given the history of this case, did you believe it would be a good idea for you to reach out to return weapons? No. Okay. Ms. Eisenhower, I want the court to be clear on this. There was there was some change left in the house, small bills, change money, like people leave around on a daily basis when the two of you separated, correct? Correct. And since the separation, there's been a no contact order, so you aren't having physical contact with Mr. Osentowski, correct? 
Correct. And that money that was left laying around the house, the, the change that comes out of her pocket, the dollars are put in a, in a bowl by the door, that's the money you're talking about having used, correct? Correct. Is it a fair statement that you have not stolen hundreds or even thousands of dollars from Mr. Asentowski and perjured yourself to lie to the court? Correct. Okay. Did you, in fact, uh, post... Well, let's go back. Uh, Ms. Asentowski, was there an opportunity in 2022 where you transferred money from your checking account to a joint checking account with Mr. Asentowski? Yes. And do you remember what date you transferred those funds? Um, it was on November 26, 2022. Okay. Uh, Judge, my client has received a copy of the proposed Exhibit 2. I'm going to approach Mr. Asentowski if that's okay to give him a copy. Sure. Just have to find gave her a copy yesterday, so she has it. Ms. Asentowski, are you referencing the plaintiff's proposed Exhibit number 2, the independent bank statement dated 12-15 of 2022? Yes. Okay, and on that statement for 11-26-2022, can you tell me where that money came from? I transferred it from my personal account into our joint account. Okay, so the account you transferred it out of was Ashlyn Asentowski's? Correct. The account you transferred it into was Ashlyn and Brandon Asentowski? Yes. Yeah. And then on November 28th, on the same statement, were there two withdrawals from your account? Yes. Did you make those withdrawals? No. To the best of your knowledge, is Mr. Asentowski the only other person authorized to make withdrawals on that account? Yes. And those two withdrawals totaled the amount that you transferred to Mr. Asentowski on the 26th. Is that correct? Yes. So I would ask that the plaintiff's proposed exhibit two be entered in the report. Ms. Asenhazi, for the court's edification, let's let's go back to this. Was there a no contact order in place between you and Mr. Asenhazi at this time? Yes. And so did you or someone on your behalf reach out to Mr. Asenhazi to notify him of that deposit? Yes, my mother, Tina Sturrett. And she made Mr. Asenhazi aware that it was there? Yes. And she made him aware that that was to pay the 2022 taxes, correct? Yes. And is it your understanding even today that until you got the motion that the 2022 taxes were current, they were paid because you had transferred the funds? Yes. Okay. Ms. Asentowski, let's talk about the winter property tax on the marital residence. When you entered into a judgment of divorce, was it your understanding that Mr. Asentowski was assuming all the debts and liabilities of the marital home? Yes. And you would agree that the winter taxes are a debt and liability of the marital home? Yes. Thank you. So you have nothing further at this time. Can you redirect any other questions of the witness? Yes, Approximately how many banks did you take money out of? Are we talking what banks? The, the banks that were in the basement. Oh, like the coin banks? Yes. Judge, I would just ask for clarification before or after the entry of the judgment of divorce. I'm going to allow the question. Okay, that's fine. I'm not sure how many there were. There were multiple banks, a couple of them. So you Four. would agree that it wasn't just. So you would agree that it wasn't just loose change with dollar, a couple dollars. There were multiple piggy banks that we had had in the home. Okay, would you, if you had to guess a dollar amount? I'm not sure. Okay, thank you. Um, Ms. Asenhowski, just, just so that we're clear, looking at Mr. Asenhowski's motion, are you familiar with the gold chain he's asking for? I'm familiar with it, yeah. Okay. When's the last time you had seen it? Um, before he went to jail. Where was it? In, in uh, October of last year, I would say. Um, he okay. usually had it on. If it wasn't on, where would it be if it were in the house? In the bathroom. Okay. 
the Yeti cooler. This, your, your attorney made reference that is an offer of proof that both you and Mr. Ossentowski received a Yeti cooler. Correct. Okay, what Yeti cooler did you receive? Were they the same, different, what were they? They were different. I have the, the white hard one. And what was the color of the other one? Uh, gray or blue? Who retained the white one? I'm sorry, what was the question? Who kept the white Yeti cooler? I have the white one. Okay, what about the other cooler? I left that one in the house. Did you ever access the home after May 31st? No. Did you send anyone else to go into the home after May 31st? No. Standing deep freeze, those don't normally disappear. What what is this, whatever happened to the standing deep freeze? I have one and he has one. You have one and he has one? Yes. Defendant, okay. Are they the same size? No, the one I have is larger. Okay. Do you know anything about any Detroit newspapers from 1915? I know what he's referring to. I don't have them. When did you last see them? A few years ago. <laughs> Similar to the Yeti cooler in, in Sandy Deep Freeze? Let me, let me rephrase. Were the newspapers there on May 31st, if you know? I never took them out of the home. I hadn't seen ask them. That. Just ask whether or not you'd seen them on or about May 31st, the day that you left. No, I had not seen them around May 31st. Okay. When was the last time you may have prior to May 31st? It had been a few years. I'm not sure where he had kept them in the house. What about the child's toy lamps? One of them. I yeah, she has it in our house here. There were two and I can't find the other one. So you had both of them? Yeah, she Adeline had I'm sorry. My daughter had had both of them in her room and I had taken everything from her room, but I'm not sure where the second one is. What about the Christmas ornaments and outside decorations? I left the outside decorations on the house. My mom had given him the Christmas ornaments I'd found um, a few months ago after I found them and gave them to him. So the money you claim that was in the in these piggy banks that you used, according to your testimony, prior to the judgment of divorce, did it include $2 bills? Mm, I think there were a couple in there, yes. Any questions in light of my questions, Mr. Austin? Um, can I ask when you acquired a Yeti cooler? Objection, Judge, I don't think it's relevant. Yeti cooler for both of them is listed in the judgment of divorce. Clearly, at the time of the judgment of divorce, there were two Yeti coolers. They were both ordered to take one. That's not the judgment of divorce, sir. Judge, he's correct. There were two lands mentioned. There were not two Yeti coolers. There was one mention being awarded to Mr. Appenbus. One lady? No, no. There was only one Yeti cooler. I apologize. Okay. There's a, a Yeti cooler awarded to Mr. Rappentaxi, which by testimony today he has the Yeti cooler. There were two lands because the judgment of divorce pensions, one is awarded to Ashlyn, one is awarded to Dad. Okay. I apologize, Judge. All right, thank you. So, one Yeti cooler, and I'm assuming that Mr. Rappentaxi, because there's only one Yeti cooler, she has the Yeti cooler. There's, no, there's, there's two, Judge. So there were two lambs and one Yeti cooler. One lamb, two Yeti coolers. Ms. Asantowski has the white one, Yeti cooler. Mr. Asantowski has the blue slash gray Yeti cooler. Okay, where is that listed in the judgment? I'm looking at page 10. Page 11. Well, on page 10 is plaintiff's list, but I don't see anything regarding Yeti cooler. Correct, Judge. That's why I just said that was my, my misstatement. Okay. I, I remember two lands thinking of two Yetis. On page 11 is Mr. Asantowski, the Yeti cooler. They each get a land. I apologize. Okay. So, why should he not receive a Yeti cooler back? Judge, he did. He, he kept the Yeti. There's one in the house, a blue gray Yeti cooler. She took one with her. She left one in the home. 
That was the testimony. She left the blue slash gray Yeti cooler in the home. Did you get a blue or any Yeti cooler? No, there are. I'm looking for my big white fishing Yeti cooler that I use for deer hunting and fishing. That is the one that it says Yeti cooler from mother. What, what yes, it's a gift from my mom. No, I, I get that. I'm not, I'm not concerned about that. But what describe that cooler that you received from your mom? I don't know what course it was, but it was four foot wide, two foot high. And what color was it? White. A hard. Okay. White. And Ms. Osentowski, you have the white Yeti cooler, correct? I do have the white one, yes. It's the large one? Yes. Word to you, Mr. Osentowski. Thank you. You took both, you had both lambs, correct, Ms. Osentowski? Yes. You were to return the one lamb you have to Mr. Osentowski. Okay. Um, let's see, what else? Judge Ms. Stewart is prepared to testify if you'd like confirmation of the dates she's available to exchange. She doesn't want to do a gun exchange in front of the minor child for obvious reasons. She's also prepared to testify about the payment for the taxes. Okay. Before we get there, though, to make it real simple, I see the, the family members here in the courtroom regarding getting the, the firearms taken care of. Yes, Can that be a discussion? Are they able to discuss as adults to make that exchange rather than the court have to do it? It's the family that you just chastised to stop complaining, Judge. So I hope they could, but I can give you the date, Judge. I, mean, I, I, I believe they could. Okay. I, can, yeah, I don't Ms. see any issue. Ms. Sturt doesn't have a problem with that. She just doesn't want to do it with a minor child around. And I can also understand the frustration of all family members regarding this case. I mean, normally, yeah. normally the divorce proceedings don't end up with files this day. So I can understand that. I trust that the party's family members can make arrangements for the fire. And that's how we'll leave that. Your Honor, if I. Can, can we get back to the, the, the deep freezer? Yeah, well, we're not done yet. Oh, okay. Judge, so I'm clear you want the lamb turned over to Mr. Askatowski. Yes. And the white Yeti cooler turned over to Mr. Askatowski. Yeah. Is the blue slash gray one then being turned over to Mrs. Askatowski? Well, I don't see in the judgment that she was awarded. Well, that's fine, Judge. I just want to make sure the order reflects what you're in. Okay. Keep some going. Go ahead with the issue relative to the freezer. Yeah, so you stated there was two deep freezers in our basement? Yes, the small one and the large one. And how big would you say the small one is? Objection. The size of the freezer is irrelevant. I guess what I'm getting at is it's not an actual deep freezer, it's just a mini <laughs> freezer. And I was awarded the standing deep freezer. Right, MF, the standing deep freezer. What is your understanding of what a standing deep freezer is? We're going all over the map here, but I'm just trying to get down to the bottom of this. Ms. Ostentowski, can you describe both standing freezers? Yes, one of them is a large one and one of them is a small one. Okay. Does not specify in the judgment of divorce which one was which. Specify that you got either one or the other. I don't, and that's what I'm looking at. I don't see anything in the judgment indicating that the plaintiff is awarded. Actually, Judge, I'm sorry. Did I miss it? Page nine under number one. Each party will obtain a personal place in the law in the household, was in furnishing in his or her possession, except for the items listed below. <laughs> okay, and that's clear. So, is it an issue of determining what standing deep freeze means under MM? What it sounds like, I guess so. So now we have to get into the intent of the party. What was meant by standing deep freeze? What was your understanding, sir? My understanding is that I traded my mom a freezer for a big standing deep freeze that we brought to our house when we would buy a quarter deep or half deep and store the meat away. The freezer that Ashlyn took is the standing deep freezer. The other freezer that was left was a freezer that is two feet tall. And it's not a deep freezer, it's just a cooler, if you may. Oh, it's not a freezer? No. Is it's, it a refrigerator? Yeah, yeah, yeah. refrigerator or cooler. So that's what you have currently. I have that, and then I have the refrigerator freezer, but I don't have the standing deep freezer. Okay. Ms. Osentowski, the, the small 
appliance? Is that a deep freeze? Is that a refrigerator? Is it a cooler? What is it? It's a freezer. One person said it's a freezer. I won't say it's either a cooler or a refrigerator. And we also point out under double D on page 10, my client is also awarded a stand up freezer. Uh, and, and I say this, Judge, because we had these conversations in the hall and the court was not a party to that, but we put it in here the way we did so that we didn't have to come back. Well, one says use stand up freezer, and the other says stand up freezer. Stand in deep freezer, I should say. Uh -huh. Your Honor, if I may, if, if actually just sort of waited until the divorce was final. She takes stuff out of the home, this would have been a lot easier. But she cleaned the whole entire house out before anything was ever awarded to anybody. She couldn't, Judge. She had to be out of the house. But she didn't need to take a freezer in. Uh... Well, the bottom line is, I have to get back to the, I have to refer to the judgment. Mm -hmm. The plaintiff is awarded a used stand-up freezer. Defendant is awarded a standing deep freezer. I don't know which one is which. I have no idea. So either, and maybe it's going to require other counsel, former counsel to come in and address this. I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know what happened in the back room. All I know is what's here in this judgment. How do we address this? Judge, my position on behalf of my client is still the same. Under the heading of personal property, the parties take the household with the furnishings and the possession. Additionally, she was awarded a stand up freezer. Mr. Rosenthal just testified that they were both used. So she's taken one, he's got one. The issue is divided. And for you, sir. Just because she took what she wanted first means that, you know, I, I just don't understand how she gets the big Getty cooler out of apparently two. She gets the big deep freezer. Like, I just don't understand how she took it upon herself to divide these household furnishings upon herself and then just do me being incarcerated. And then when I get out, I come home to smash banks on the ground and missing random stuff that I really don't have proof of other than her testimony that it was there. See, that's the problem. But that's, she said it was there, but I, you know, I just can't prove what she took. So when this list was put together for purposes of the judgment, mm -hmm. The property was, I'm assuming Ms. Ostentowski already took her property, took property out. That's correct, Judge. She was gone before the judgment of divorce. Opposing <clears throat> counsel, because Mr. Ostentowski had two separate firms representing him, indicated that the house had been searched. Mr. Ostentowski had his family in there prior to the entry of the judgment of divorce. Once my client left the end of May, she never went back. He had family and friends in and out of that house from June 1st on. My client's never been back. Or seven months later, and now things are missing, and he's blaming my client. Mr. Ossentowski's also had a girlfriend that recently left under a police escort. We have Objection. no idea what's that's, come and gone. That's that's we're, we're not going into that. I Objection appreciate that, Judge. Uh, Objection sustained, relative. I'm, I'm focusing on trying to get down to the brass tacks here. The problem here in this order, in this judgment, it says you stand up freezer for one, and then the other, it says standing deep freezer. I was not a party to the negotiations. I, I, I can't. I can't go into the heads of each respective party to figure out which one they were to receive. For instance, if one is taller than the other, they would receive the larger one or the smaller one that's not listed in the judgment of the course. So relative to the freezer in this case, the parties keep the respective freezers they have for C. money. Any other questions of Ms. Ostentowski, Mr. Ostentowski, relative to your motion for property? No. Anyone else you want to call regarding the property issue? Other than yourself. Yeah. I'm okay. Well, Lord, when you entered the home on or about June 1st, 2023, what did you see before? Objection, Judge. There are very specific items you've already directed, Mr. Asentowski, to stick to those items. You just stick to the items listed in your motion, sir. When you were in the basement, did you notice any money laying around or anything out of the ordinary? No, prior when I was in the home, I did. When I was in Objection, non responsive. I'm going to ask to strike. He asked when she entered the home if she noticed anything. Anything after that answer is non responsive to the question and irrelevant to the proceedings. Just answer the question. Okay. Did you notice any money laying around on, anywhere out of the ordinary in the basement? There was a safe that was open. Um, I took pictures of it. Um, I believe there was like a roll of something coins, but I, I didn't go near it. 
Um, and then I looked, there was broken piggy banks um, in the basement that I had seen prior. Objection. Same objection, Judge. Objection sustained. A safe that was open. Yes. Anything odd about the safe that was open? Yeah, there was like a stick that was used to get it open of some sort. Okay. Um, did you notice any other large items in the basement missing? Okay. Yes, should it? It's already been directed to keep it to these specific items. Mr. Austin has to keep it to open it up to whatever is found by the member. Do you see more specific relative to the items to the Respectfully, the only reason I'm asking is my mother was the first one in the house since Ashley left. Okay. Nobody else was there between that. Um, did you notice a freezer in the basement missing? Yes, it was a freezer. Did you answer the question? Yes. How many freezers were in the basement when you went down there? Um, when Ashley moved down? When you entered the house, June 1. June 1. There wasn't any freezers. Sorry? I didn't, I didn't see any freezers. Okay, thank you. Were you aware that me and Ashlyn kept any money in the house ever in our six years or five years? Of Absolutely. Period? I'm going to object. That's an incredibly long time frame, Judge. We're talking about a specific period of time. From the time my client moved out to the entry of the judgment of divorce, not six, 10, or 20 years in the past. I'm still going to allow over objection. I think, Judge. She's answered. You can go ahead. Yes, I did. You were aware that we kept some money in the house? Oh, absolutely. I saw it. So you would be kind of dumbfounded to say, yes, there was no, I assume they had one loose dollar bill laying around when you entered the home. Objection. Her perception as to how she feels about money in the house is not relevant to this motion or any of the proceedings. When you've seen the open safe and no money in it or anything, were you just, is that normal? Objection. Her perception of normal is not relevant to these proceedings. <clears throat> Again. Okay. You not seeing any money loosely anywhere in the house was that out of out of the ordinary? Prior to objection, in the home. objection. Her perception and what she's seen is not relevant. We're talking about a period of time where Mr. Ostentowski wasn't in the house, then Mr. Mr. Ostentowski had access to the house. What she has seen in the history is irrelevant. Focusing on what was discovered June 1st, moving on, or what wasn't discovered. So let's focus on that. I'm going to object let's, to the witness. Let's focus testimony. the questions on June 1st. So go ahead. On June 1st, you basically went over to the house to take inventory of what was there and what was not there, correct? Right. And upon doing that, you really, there was a, a sleep on the bed that was missed on. Yes. Objection. Not relevant to the items that we're still discussing, Judge. We've already disposed of the sleep number. Yeah, let, let's focus on full change, any coolers, standing deep freezers, newspapers, ornaments, yeah. outside decorations, or two dollar bills. We'll say. <laughs> were there any Christmas ornaments outside when you entered the house? No, oh, outside the house. Outside. Uh, on June 1st. No, there was, well, there was still decorated from when you had decorated in November. Okay. There was a big change from when Objection. I Objection. Okay. Were you aware of the lockbox already in my room? Objection. We, we've already determined the lockbox and the safe are a separate item. She's already testified to her knowledge of seeing the safe. Mr. Austin has to be acknowledged. He didn't file a motion about a lockbox. That's not what we're here for. We're here talking about the safe that everybody's already testified. We need to focus on your motion here, sir. No further questions. All right, cross examination. Just briefly, Judge. Yes or no, did you just testify? House was still decorated on the outside and on the brand of the prior November. 
there was like smoking on the outside of the house. And those are what you meant when you said the house was still decorated from him doing it prior to November? Yes, thank you. I think further this time, Judge. Sorry, Judge. That's okay. Um, when, when you entered the home on June 1st, did you happen to see any decreases? No, there were not. And I had given, um, when it was in my garage, it was just like brand new. And I told them that I would let them go ahead and use it because they just got some bees. And I said, go ahead and use mine and they can use it. I didn't care. They, and they gave me a smaller one. Okay, so this decrease of yours, was that used at your place or was it taken some? It was used at my house originally, but they had bought some beef and they were going to get a bigger decrease. And I said, well, just use the big one that's in mine and I'll condense mine into a small one. And so this is a large stating decrease? It's a huge one. Okay. And <clears throat> when you entered the home on June 1st, there were no decreases in the home anymore. No. And then eventually, you heard, well, you didn't hear. The small deep freeze, how, how large is this small one? It's, it's just, it's just right? It's not really off. Okay. Um, and just, I just want to say that I'm going to object. You, you just have to okay. just okay. answer the question. Okay. So, November it was there. You, okay, November. November it was there. So you let. Are you saying that you gave the bee freeze to them or you let them use it? I thought I heard you say let them use it. I said that they can go ahead and use that. Okay. But Queen's Brandon does a lot of work for me, you know. Oh, fair enough. That's all I need. Okay. Any questions in light of the courts? No, Judge. Sir, do you have any questions in light of the courts? Questions? No, no, no. All right. The court will rule relative to the deep freeze in this case. If the large deep freeze is to be returned to Mr. Osentowski, the plaintiff receives the small Okay. Any other proofs regarding uh, the property motion? Any uh, other witnesses, I should say? No other witnesses, no. Okay, well, before I go to Ms. Rogova, the court will inquire of you, sir. Uh, you heard only a few moments ago of, of uh, $2,500 being taken out of accounts and placed, in, placed into the joint account? Yes. Okay. And the twenty-five hundred dollars was that. Why was that transferred? If you know, I don't know because our taxes were only uh, one thousand three hundred thirty-six dollars. Okay. I'm not sure if that's if I we even inquired over two thousand twenty-two taxes. I'm, I'm going to ask. Again, we're going way out of order here, but I'm just trying to get to the meat and potatoes. Ms. Ostatowski, why did you transfer $2,500 into the joint account? Pay on the taxes. On the taxes. Okay. So I'll go back to you, Mr. Ostatowski. Do you agree with that or disagree with that? I totally disagree. Um, we both have the ability to pay the taxes. I guess I don't know why you put money into the joint account and then meet it. It's kind of silly. I don't know why should we weren't. It, it was called. Eleven twenty-six. Eleven twenty-six. We weren't even divorced or separated or anything at the time, so I don't. What? Judge, I believe Ms. Sturt can offer some further testimony, and as Ms. Asentasi testified, there's a no contact or Asentasi wasn't even in the state at the time she transferred it. She had her mother follow up, and Ms. Sturt's testimony is going to reveal that Ms. Ms. Sturt reached out to him by text to let him know to send out the check because the envelope was sitting on the counter. Okay, so do you have any other proofs relative to the property, sir? No. Call your witnesses. I can see Mr. Judge, I can get her from the home. <laughs> freezer, so I can put it in order. Would you like the freezer dropped off at a neutral location? Would you like it? Where would you like the freezers exchanged? Because the parties can't have friends. What, what will work? Can a third party bring it to me, or I can maybe have a third party retrieve it? Given Ms. Asentowski's recent medical condition, I would request that a third party retreat, but I don't think she's in a position to lift and carry this right now. Who's the third party that you would suggest? Uh, my uncle or my dad. I'm not sure. Is there any objection to that? No. When can it be done? As soon as he can make arrangements or somebody come over. Well, respectfully, I would like to make sure that she's if it's full of food. I don't want her to have to get out. Well, that's kind of appreciate that. Judge, why don't we set it for 10 days from now? 
And then we have time to get the order entered. Does that work? Yeah, that's fine. So within 10 days of entry of the order. And then um, when Mr. Asim has these third party to bring the small freezer to my clients so that we don't have to negotiate two separate sections. One stop shop. Beautiful, thank you. Excuse me. Um, so the freezer that was exchanged from Lauren for the larger one, the, that smaller one is at Lauren's house, or it was at Lauren's house. So is she exchanging that one back, or are we talking about the other freezer that's still in the basement? Because we're, we're talking about three different freezers now from what Lauren had said. Well, Ms. Asimhouse, you said there were no freezers when she went into the basement on June 1st. There were none, correct? So I freezer that we exchanged with my mom. I got that back when I got the house back from my mom. So it's my mom's okay. retreat. So that would be the freezer coming to my client's house, correct, Judge? Yes. Beautiful. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Bring your mother. You are the mother of Ashton Asimhouse, is that correct? Mm -hmm. And you are well aware, I'm surprised there's no contact order between your daughter and your ex son in law, correct? And so is it a true statement that you've kind of been the go between a lot of the times? You do a lot of care for Helen? Yes, I apologize, Judge. I shouldn't have sent her to All right. Um, judge, I'm going to ask if I may approach the witness. I'm going to provide Mr. Asentowski a copy of what's marked as Plaintiff's Exhibit Proposed 3. Ma'am, do you recognize this photograph? And what does that depict? Um, Ashlyn transferring money into an account and asking me to. Um, and pay. Okay, and is that an accurate depiction of the exchange you have with Mr. Asimhouse? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you believe that was Brandon Asimhouse, the defendant in this case? Okay. Judge, I would ask that the court receive plaintiff's exhibit proposed three. Mr. Asimhouse, can you review that, sir? Yes. Any objection to the court review that? No, no. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Ms. Sturrett, you were the go between between Mr. Asimhouse and Ms. Asimhouse at that point, is that correct? Yes. And that was dated November 28th of 2022. Is that correct? Yes. And so was it your understanding that that was pertaining to the 2022 taxes that were due? Yes. yes. Okay. And uh, that's still the same number you can make, communicate with Mr. Rasmus even today. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Now, one other housekeeping item you and I have talked about. You don't have any issue with um, a third party that was ordered in the judgment to pick up Brandon's weapons. Is that correct? Yes. And you just requested an have when Adeline is there, so it'll be at seven o'clock at night. Yeah. Okay. All right. And you have no issue doing that, correct? No. Okay. Thank you, Judge. Nothing else at this time. Do you have any questions at this point? No. Okay. So this text message is this envelope still on the counter. How much money was in the counter? So that it was um Ashlyn had. Transferred money from one account to another for Brandon to pay. The envelope is on there at their house. So Ashton was just saying that envelope is there. So you can use that. Well, there's cash in the house. No, the money was in a, a bank account. Okay, so what was in the envelope? Um, maybe the cash paper. Okay. But your understanding is the money transfer that you were involved in communication with Mr. Austin's house was for purposes of tax. Yes. Okay. Any questions in light of Not of her, Judge, but my client will be able to give you some further information about the envelope. I just okay. wanted to put it in order for you. Okay. Do you have any other questions? Mr. Austin's house, please. No. You may say. I would recall Mr. Austin's house, please, Judge. She's still under oath. Ashlyn, can you hear me? Yes. Were you able to hear Tina Stewart's testimony? Yes. And you recall that we prior you testified about an independent bank statement. Do you remember that? Yes. Okay. So the text that your mom sent on November 28th, 2022, was that at your request? Yes. Was that because at that time there was already a no contact order in place? Yes. And when your mom reached out about the envelope on the counter, can you explain to the court what the envelope was? And what the purpose of the envelope was. So I didn't have any checks for our account. Brandon had an account that he had checks for. So I transferred the money for him to write the check and send to um, to pay the taxes. When I had gotten home, the envelope to send the taxes out was still there, like with the tax stub. 
And that was after the no contact order. You and Mr. Osentowski didn't have contact at that point. Correct. To the best of your understanding, though, Mr. Osentowski was to take that $2,500 and pay any taxes that were due. Yes. Thank you. Nothing further at this time, Judge. Any questions? No, I'm still confused about it. Okay, well, you have the opportunity for questions, please. I, I guess why would you transfer $2,500 if the taxes were only $13? $1,325. I'm assuming, I don't remember, I'm assuming I probably transferred more money to have more money in the account for when you took the set amount out that there was still money in the account so it didn't get overdrawn. Is it fair enough to say that I also have I transferred money into that account? I need to ask for clarification. The <clears throat> number that he just gave is not what he included in his motion. And I want to make sure we're all on the same page. I thought I heard him say the 1300. He said 1325, and that's not what's in the motion. And since this is a very detailed family, I want to make sure we're all on the same page. I'm assuming 1336.95. Might be splitting hairs here, but I'm just looking at what your motion says. Yes, 1,336. Okay, so that's the number. Thank you, Judge. Okay, go ahead. There's two separate taxes. That's what I was talking about. Okay. Talking about your winter property taxes since I wasn't here. You occupied the home from December all the way until June. I was in the home. Do you have any questions this week? Yeah, is it fair to say that we both would transfer money into the joint account? Objection. We're not talking about Mr. Ostasi's transfer. He's indicating that my client paid her share. He's not refuting that she did already pay her share. But let me ask this, though. The, doesn't the judgment of divorce indicate that for the 23 taxes, that would be Mr. Ostasi's responsibility because he's awarded the home, is he not? Correct. I didn't think we were doing 23 taxes yet, Judge. I thought we were just doing 22 taxes. Oh, well, I'm, I guess I'm looking at them all. You're asking for the 23 taxes. Yeah, I guess I overlooked that the judgment of divorce. That was for the winter of 2023. Yeah. Okay. I just want I just want to get clear so we can cover all the bases. All right. Thank you. Any further proofs by anyone now regarding the property? Not unless we still need to talk about the 23 taxes. No. Nope. Okay. It sounds like he's withdrawing. Okay. No, Judge. Okay. Court finds that the amount of money that was deposited into the joint bank account is uncontroverted. The testimony provided was that it's for tax purposes. And as a result, the 1336.95, frankly, the court finds has already been paid for testimony presented on the record. That addresses the property issue. Oh, I'm sorry. No, it doesn't. Regarding a gold chain, Detroit newspapers, uh, there's any other property that is in the possession of the plaintiff is to be turned over forthwith pursuant to the judgment. So it's discovered later, inadvertently a gold chain is found. Oh, look, there's some newspapers. What, where are those from? The order continues. So Ms. Ostentowski, if that's discovered, you must return that to Mr. Ostentowski immediately. Do you have any questions about that? No. Okay, thank you. Can I ask for clarification just so the order is reflected? I have the issue of personal property. So it's the order of the court that the 2022 taxes have been paid by my client and she's no longer responsible for anything outstanding, correct? That is correct. Right. That's correct. Now let's talk about the motion for parenting. I would renew my request, Judge. If there's any witnesses in here that are going to be testifying, I would ask they be sequestered to the hall. They would potentially testifying in this case relative to the parenting time. Yes, sir. Father and mother. Okay. I'll ask that they both step out for a moment. And the mother in law for that's my own team. Yep, she's stepping out there. Okay. Right. So that we're clear. The motion regarding parenting time. Is this the one dated 1219? No, Judge. I have one dated 121 of 24 for Mr. Asantasi with a handwritten attachment. I knew I'd look at it, but I was. Got it. Just a couple things going on, Judge. <laughs> Sorry, there are two files here, and the court did review it. You know, I, 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 one last question before we proceed about the property. Um, okay, go ahead. I just wanted to respectfully say that I, you know, I made sure to meet the deadline of giving Ashton $35,000. 
you know, it wasn't easy for me to vote with, especially with everything else I paid, you know. And in return, you know, I, I just she had to the 18th or the 20th of January to just make any connection with my family as far as my weapons or any, you know, anything. Through a third party, through herself, just nothing, you know, and I just feel like this is a court. She had to the 20th to give me my position back for making arrangements. She failed to do so. And when I failed to do something on the court's deadlines, I get held in contempt of court. So I just wanted to clarify that, make sure I was aware that you were aware that I, I did pay her in full the $35,000. And that's, that's that. Okay. And I appreciate that. Thank you. You're welcome. So, Right. Regarding the motion for parenting time, uh, Ms. Rosenbach is asking for an offer. What are you asking for specifically? I know you have some issues regarding the plaintiffs, what appears to be significant and other, but what are you asking for specifically regarding your parenting time? What, what are you asking for? Um, <clears throat> we had last judgment we came up with. Um, if Ashley and I were unable to agree to a supervisor outside of the office, then a supervisor would be provided. Um, I I reached out to the counselor 14, we had 14 days that that was entered, and I reached out to Angel Gomez, the supervisor at um, the general center in Saginaw, and he had not yet received any information regarding moving to step two. However, he did get a hold of me on Monday, sorry, on my day, two Mondays ago, and said that he received something from the front of the court stating we were ready to move on to phase two. And I, well, Saturday I had my visit with him, and he asked me who I would like the supervisor to be if I had any. And I told him my dad. And he said, okay, if Ashton doesn't agree to that, do you have a backup plan? And I said, my, my mom. And then he proceeded to get back to Ashton and got back with me on Sunday, saying Ashton didn't want my dad to do it because Adam didn't feel comfortable around my father. It's totally untrue. And then I said, well, what about my mom? And she said, no, your mom, she doesn't, definitely doesn't want your mom to do it. Supervised parent time. So I said, well, who does Ashton recommend? She said, Tina or Bob, her mother or stepfather. And I said, okay, well, her mother already takes her to the appointments in Saginaw, I guess her stepdad could possibly do it. And I got a reply saying, no, he doesn't get off work until in time to do it. So it has to be Tina, Ashton's mom. So I agreed with it. Just for the time being, because that was on Monday that we had this conversation. We were scheduled to have a visit at the library on Tuesday. So I said, yep, let's, I'll file a motion on Monday. And for now, let's leave it the way it is. And I said, is it okay if I bring my dad just to see how I will react? I said, yes, that's fine. So when I brought my dad to the visit, I got there first. Of course, my daughter just ran to me. And about five minutes later, my dad came, same thing. Both the right hand, jumped right in his arms. You know, there's a joy. So I don't, I don't understand where us and is saying that Alan doesn't hurt. Our daughter doesn't feel comfortable around my father. So your parenting time motion deals first with the supervisor? <clears throat> yes. Okay. Judge, if I could interject. Sure. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if you're going to require him to offer an offer of proof. So I don't want to, like, I don't want to assume you are or you aren't, but I don't think the supervisor issue, I can report talking to Mr. Gomez, that's Ash, Al, minor child's time, sorry, I apologize, yesterday, and he indicated that he believed that the supervisor situation was resolved. Mrs. Stewart will be there, her husband will come if she can, and that Mr. Asentowski's dad would be coming so that the child could get comfortable with him because there's been a significant period of time with no contact. And so from my talking with Mr. Gomez, he didn't think that was an issue. He believes that the contact at the library was going well and that my client was comfortable with her mom, her stepdad, and Mr. Asentowski's dad supervising. 
She is, in fact, not comfortable with his mother for the reasons that this court chastised her for when we were at the judgment of divorce. She badmouths my client. She showed up at the parenting time counseling session to see Ashley or to see the minor child. She's not a parent. This court was very clear at the entry of the judgment. Parenting time is for the parent. Oh, Bruce, she doesn't get to come to parenting time when Mr. Ossentaz <coughs> is supposed to be working on reintegration to exercise her contact with the minor child. My client has no reason to believe that Mr. Ossentaz's mother is going to follow the rules or not work to sabotage the relationship. Well, what, what about this then? I mean, if, if we want to put the rubber to the road here, we always sound like we are we have her parents supervising. Why not have the other grandparents too? Have four. At the same time, Judge? Sure. If the counselor thinks that's appropriate, he seemed to think that would be a lot for a minor child. Well, I don't know what the counselor's going to say. Your Honor, I reached out to the counselor and he doesn't have any concerns for the business to even be supervised or unsupervised. I've had this conversation with him. He says, no, I have no concern of you even doing your visits unsupervised or supervised or even in a public location. Is the counselor available to testify today? By either side? I'm not sure. No, Judge. I, I didn't subpoena him. It wasn't my motion. I didn't subpoena him. I assumed Mr. Asantasi would, would do his due diligence. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to cut to the chase on this one. Uh, because we have one or two parties from each side in the supervision, absent the therapist saying four is too much, I'm ordering it. Judge, just supervision clear, only. They're not, they're not there the whole time. Grandma comes from mom's side. Tina, super, if she can't, then her husband comes. They're not all coming together. Mr. Asantowski's dad was coming to reintegrate. So if Tina wasn't available, then Mr. Asantowski's dad would be, we're not cramming all these supervisors in at the same time. We're just putting a chain in place. So if somebody's sick or the weather's bad, so that there's no disruption, because as the court's aware, Mr. Asantowski is not happy when we had a sick person that couldn't transport the child to counseling. We're trying to put in a chain of people. We're not cramming all these supervisors in at once, Judge. I don't want you to get that impression. No, but part of this is reintegration for father. And it's been, I guess, selected by Mr. Oscott. He just kind of put his hands up and said, okay, either plaintiff's mom or stepdad can supervise, right? Yes. Okay. So... You already have someone there from mom's side. We're going to do it this way. One supervisor from mom's side, one from dad. It could be mother, your mother, or your father. One at a time. And just, just a moment. If, as alleged by Ms. Rogenbuck, if there's any bad mouthing or anything like that, there's a witness to watch that and report it. On the flip side... If there is nothing going on like that, we're getting the child back, hopefully to a better state. So I am ordering as to supervision, prior orders remain in effect regarding supervision. The supervisors will, will consist of either stepfather or mother of the plaintiff and father or mother of the defendant, but it's only one of each. So you can interchange them. You can do whatever you wish. That's what I'm ordering regarding supervision. And judge that, so I'm clear for the order. That's for any time supervision is needed. That's correct. And is the court's position that the supervisors should still follow the protocol that Mr. Gomez put out, which means the supervisors don't interfere. They don't participate. They're simply there behind a window. To supervise. Same rules apply. Thank you. Here it comes. I have a feeling it's coming. Only because we want the order to be specific to help the parties along in this process. Um, what was communicated to me by Mr. Gomez is that the parties had agreed that the business would be 45 minutes on Tuesdays at 4 15 p.m. to be exercised. Uh, no, I don't see a specific location. Oh, uh, excuse me. Library. Uh, at the library. You would like the order to reflect that agreement for the next 30 <coughs> days for these two. Right. For the next 30, 30 days. days. 30 days. We've already been doing these. Okay. Two weeks, but at the library. Just to clarify, 45 minutes Tuesdays, beginning at 4 15 at the Bay Library. Right. Next 30 days. With all due respect, Your Honor, the only reason I wanted one of 
my parents would be there is because I never had a chance to be there. And if it's always Tina, 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 it's just not healthy for my relationship with my daughter. Well, that, yeah. that's why I'm incorporating your parents as well. Right. I, I, about I don't necessarily that's a good idea because now you have my, my parents and her parents and me. The session may be 45 minutes, but by the time we're all said and done, I only get 20 minutes to interact with my daughter. But it's your time for the parenting. It's not her mother or your mother or your father. Right. But it's my, your time. They're only there to supervise. Correct. Right. Although my daughter hasn't seen them in 10 months, she just runs up to them and wants to interact with them. And it's hard to get her attention off of that and come back to me. Hey, your, your dad, if, if, if she loves you the way, as you, as you say, I can see it. That's part of dad's job. I mean, yeah, there's, there's grandma, there's grandpa, nana, papa, whatever it is. Let's go do something. Let's read a book, whatever. That's what you have to do. That's what you have to do. I stand by my order. Now, the other issue regarding parenting time is father has objection to plaintiff's significant other. What's the issue there? Well, many reasons. Uh, I mean, if my mom is a bad influence, I can't be around. I'm not saying my that. child. No, I'm, I'm saying no, 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 no. You don't need to go back. You don't need to rehash okay. that because if I found she were bad influence, she wouldn't be part of the, of the supervision. Right. So let's focus on let's focus on what's important. I just heard multiple. Well, first, first off, first and foremost, I was not impressed with the way Ashlyn went about adding him to the authorized pickup at daycare without even mentioning anything to me. I feel like that was co-parenting at its finest. Judge, what I will say is there's a no contact order. As the court's aware, my client literally was in labor the last time we were here, and she added him as a backup because, frankly, we're in Michigan winter, and if she's delivering on a table, I highly doubt she was going to call Mr. Asentoski. Mr. Asentoski has no right to pick her up. So she also has her mother and her stepfather on that list. That was to make sure that the minor child was protected in the event that my client was not Judge, in the position. Right, 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 right. Well, here's here's where I want to go with it. Why is Kyle Perutsky going to be a problem? You, you're you're the one that's that's having the issue. Tell me what the problem is with that that individual. Well, I've heard from a lot of people that he just has no respect for me. I have heard recordings from him, you know, admitting to animal abuse, and I've, I've been around this. Judge, guy. I'm gonna. I work with Object that it's all hearsay. I understand you may want to hear it, but I'm going to place the objection that it's all hearsay. It's no. I've worked with this guy side by side. I've watched him take marijuana breaks. You know, like, I just I don't trust that he's not doing that around my child, especially when it's just him and her. And you know the fact that I need reintegration with my child because of a personal dispute between me and my ex-wife, which had nothing to do with my child. It, CPS was never involved. There has never been a domestic violence. Nothing. It was just accusations. That's not true, Judge. Well, we're, we're focusing on Mr. Brutsky. I understand. And I, I just don't see how he's fit to pick my daughter up from daycare or play dad when I'm not even close to that point. Yeah. Okay. Anybody for that matter. My daughter is probably going through enough mentally right now that I, I don't think other people get to decide who gets to, you know, be her dad and who doesn't get to be her dad. I mean, okay, but now we have to be specific because this is what the court has to follow, the rules of the court, which contains the rules of evidence. What you've heard, the court can't consider. You have to give me something ironclad. You stated that you saw him take marijuana breaks, okay? But what do you have specific that you have seen? And I know it's difficult because of the no contact, but what have you seen specifically of this individual so, that is going to cause a problem for your child? So if I bring someone in here to testify that he did smoke with his daughter in the, in the vehicle, that's... You're, you're asking for legal advice. I can't render okay. that. I'm not. I'm not allowed to. 
Do you want to? I mean, what is it? How, how about this? Do you do you want to adjourn this part of the motion? So if, if you wish to call witnesses on that fact, you can, and we can re readdress it. I'm just offering that to you. It's up to you. Just so we're clear, I want Mr. Osentowski to know this. We will be asking for attorney fees. We are back here again. Mr. Osentowski is required to conduct himself just like I would. If I came unprepared, the court would sanction me. If he's not prepared for the hearing, then we would be requesting attorney fees. Do you have any, any test? You've heard it. It's up to you. Do you want to address it now? Potentially, you could be paying some attorney fees. Potentially. I'm not ordering anything yet. I don't know. I mean, this, this is the day to bring it, though. Do you have anything specific regarding Mr. Perutsky? Any witness testimony? I have no witnesses here. That's okay, see, that, that's the problem. I just, just have my, you know, myself and flipping me off every night. It has me. You know, I, just, I don't need a child taking care of my child. And I've seen it firsthand. This is disrespect. Okay. Any. Uh, yes, Judge. Uh, I want to clarify a couple of points. Mr. Asentowski said it was a dispute, nothing domestic. He's quite guilty. The aggravated stalking. We, we don't need to go there. Let, let's talk about Mr. Bruce. Oh, that's fine, Judge. Uh, Mr. Cruz, he was in the picture before the judgment was entered. This None of this is new, Judge. This could have all been contemplated at the entry of the judgment of divorce and the subsequent custody order. The parties reviewed and agreed to it. There was not even a request to take him out. Mr. Asentowski could have had his team of lawyers try that matter. He did not put anything in a judgment that Mr. Persky couldn't have contact. Now, all of a sudden, Mr. Persky is a bad guy and shouldn't have contact with this child. He didn't have to agree to a judgment. We could have tried that issue. Mr. Persky has been in the picture before this judgment was entered, before the parties consented to enter this judgment. Both parties, and at the last hearing, Mr. Ostentowski again testified. He understood the terms of the judgment. He knowingly signed it. He wasn't under the influence. None of this is new, Judge. It's why I asked for an offer of proof. The entry of the judgment was the last order pertinent to these issues in the custody and parenting time, and none of these issues are new. It shouldn't go any further. So during this time in limbo, it was ordered that no romantic party shall have any interference or interact with my child. I did not know that he was picking that, her up from day. Is that correct? He didn't have any contact with the minor child judge. He had contact with my client. That's how that's how we set the okay. temporary order. Okay. That, that's had, what I yeah, he didn't have contact yeah. with the minor child, but he was definitely in the picture. And as the court is aware, my client disclosed she was pregnant at the, at the entry of the judgment of divorce, which Mr. Ostentowski and his family put on the internet prior to the entry. So they were aware that Mr. Persky was in the picture. I go back to my same point. None of this is new, Judge. It is a it is reasonable to assume that the person you are with is going to be around your child. Unfortunately, Mr. Asentowski didn't see that as an issue before, or maybe he did and he didn't push it. I don't know. But nothing is different since the entry of the judgment of the divorce judge. I don't have I don't have an issue with him being around my child. It's the issue of him solely. Or taking care of her when she has a temperature of 103 degrees, and like I said, I know the guy and he can't even take care of himself. I don't mind him being in the picture whatsoever, but if he's gonna act foolish and put me off and act like a child, and yeah, of course I don't want him taking care of my daughter one on one. I mean, I didn't even do anything to lose my daughter, and I'm supposed to be okay with another man taking care of her. I really don't know why I. I wish somebody could give me that answer as to why I even lost my child besides signing or agreeing in the judgment of the court. I didn't foresee the same taking months to get her back home. Well, I, I'm not going to rehash what was built up to the divorce, but before the court is whether or not this individual poses any type of threat or significant threat to the minor child. And the court has secured information, competent evidence to indicate whether there's an issue. Here it appears to be really an issue between Mr. Brutsky and, and father in this case. And, and, and certainly if it's true that he's Mr. Brutsky is acting in that behavior, I would be upset too. However, there's been no showing before this court that Mr. Brutsky uh, is a threat or harm to the minor child. If, if there was something, I know Mr. Ossentowski would bring it. I don't, it's not before the court. I don't hear it. I don't see it. Um, and frankly speaking, that probably should have, they should have been addressed prior to the force being entered. 
The motion regarding parenting time relative to prohibiting Mr. Brutsky around the child uh, is respectfully denied. Also, I have to make reference to the fact that they now have a child in common together and, and to isolate him out of the home would be impossible. Add to that the fact that Mr. Osentowski said he doesn't have a problem with this individual being around the child, but it's just some of his behaviors. So that motion is respectfully denied. Judge, okay. for the order purposes, motion regarding prohibition of pilot person having contact with the minor child is denied. Is that sufficient? That is correct. Okay. Thank you, Judge. Does that cover it? Is there anything else I'm missing, Mr. Osentowski, that you were asking for this morning? No, no. Okay. Thank you. Judge, I'll prepare the order and submit it. It likely won't be today. If I'm with you this afternoon, well, I'm with you, I'm with you now. Yep.